Hello, everybody, and welcome to Warcrafters. And I was just logged out of my uh, <laughs> screen. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, hold on a second. Doink. All right. Well, I am Marwat. Oh, wait. So uh, today is October 27th, 2024, it's season one, episode 27. I am Marwat, and along with the sentient AI from the future, we're going to be talking about Overthrown climate change games wow one expensive mount uh fortnite crossover masterclass and when not enough is not enough so yeah everything's powered by hometown.com so go over there and become a citizen hometown.com all news none of the noise you can just search for what you're interested in or go into one of 50 channels and <clears throat> there's actually more um that uh, may come, some may be disabled and we swap out a, a particular topic because areas of interest. I use hometown.com as my information overload mechanism. And uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of a tool for everybody. So go over and uh, see what you can use it for. Keep in touch though, come over to our daily show, non sequitur news uh, over on Twitch and YouTube. All 1400 plus channels are or episodes are over on YouTube. Not all of it is stored on Twitch because they delete it every 60 days. That's kind of Come frustrating. On, Twitch. Yeah. Well, I mean, I understand the limitation. I mean, that's a lot of storage to sit there and babysit. But anyway, um, everything's powered by hometown, like I've been saying. So we'll see you on the other side of this. Yeah, so right when I loaded up the uh, the page, refreshed and punted me. Nice timing. Kind of, kind of frustrated. Uh, so now I can't even get into it. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm. I know. I know. Non sequitur news is this is not. So this is Warcrafters. Welcome to the show. Uh, we have five articles that we're going to talk about. Thirty minutes. I've already wasted two. So hello, hometown citizens, and welcome to Warcrafter. And that voice you hear is the co-host, the sentient AI from the future, the one that keeps me out of trouble, like what you just witnessed. The very first article is over on the Warcrafters channel, which is uh, Overthrown is another cozy city builder, but this time you're a killer queen who can lift buildings and murder bandits. So the cozy city builder genre is almost as crowded as soft, easygoing farming sims right now. But Southeast Asian indie outfit... Uh, Brimstone seems to think that it's got a solution for spicing up the formula slapstick cartoon violence. Featured in Steam's recently concluded Next Fest and available now for an extra week, Overthrown is a familiar enough town builder. You build the population, manage resources, balance taxation, and keep your kingdom happy, expanding comfortably, etc. But <clears throat> rather than controlling it all from an abstract bird's eye perspective, this one lets you play as the exceedingly proactive, super-powered queen. Uh, I haven't played this, but I downloaded it at the beginning of Next Fest. Dominic Terrison over at PCGamer.com put the article together. All monarchs should be this proactive. No. Well, um, I don't know. That depends on what they're trying to do. Yeah. Protect the citizenry? Sure. You know, rule with an iron fist, like, I don't know, so many tyrants today. No. Um, so I've watched a few people play this. Seems to be fun, kind of quirky. Um, events that take place are kind of catching people off guard, and then they go, oh, okay, this is what I do. Um, and you can discover things like double jumping and stuff as you play it. So uh, while you can zoom out to plan out your town from a traditional builder's perspective, Overthrown encourages players to exist in the world, sprinting around, splattering bandits, crushing their camps, and occasionally just throwing them into low Earth orbit, Team Rocket style. It's actually a fun game to watch. I don't know if I'll ever play it, um, you know, beyond the demo. I got a, a week to do it, right. though. It sounds over the top, which could be entertaining. 
Yeah, and what's really fun, though, is it supports up to six players, allowing for some truly chaotic shenanigans as co-monarchs grab and throw each other and rough, run roughshod over each other's building plans. Even testing the demo out with two players, things could get impressively messy. Uh, but they say that it's a little buggy, and that's what I witnessed in the streams that I watched. So hopefully the full game will give both the queens and her army a proper run for their money. Uh, but even if not, there's something to be said for moving house by uprooting your town hall and slamming it down half a mile downriver. The overthrow demo is available until uh, October 27th. So you've got tomorrow because this is a week. October show. 28th. Oh, I said 28th. Oh, I thought I said 28th. Today is the 27th. I said, I think I might have said the 27th, giving you one day, but today is the 27th. So you have until tomorrow. Uh, with an early access launch scheduled for some time in November. So not too far out. Um, I don't know. I, I saw a little bit of jank in it, but it should be fun. And I like multiplayer stuff so that I can invite somebody in and, and play the game together. Seems well, like and I fun. think people playing demos helps make the games better. Yep. Be sure to like, uh, uh, add it to your wish list. That's the thing. That moves it up the ranks and it actually gets a lot of publicity because it moves up the ranks. So let the world know that you're interested in the game and want the game to succeed by liking it or adding it to your wish list. Doggone it. I've got like 580 games in my wish list right now. Let's keep moving. Uh, the next article is over in the Warcrafter channel as well. The best games about climate change. Game narratives are always evolving with the times, and as climate change becomes bigger and bigger concern for many around the world, it's only natural that it should make its way into video games as well. I guess um, this is about time. I've been kind of waiting to see if this was going to happen. There's one game in here that I, if they don't have, then I don't know what they're what what what's missing from this. But let's find out. So these are the eight best games about climate change. Alex Daniel Reed from GameRant.com put the article together. Number eight is Frostpunk. Um, so Frostpunk is a world where it's been put into a deep freeze and you actually have to manage heat to keep your community alive. Um, it's quite an intriguing uh, game considering there are scientists out there that have to be insane to suggest, oh, by the way, this... The, the news story that I'm talking about just recently made it onto Reddit and somebody said the exact same thing that I said, but they want to dump diamond dust into the atmosphere to cool the planet, which is batshit crazy. Right. We had an article about that. I think it was a non sequitur news, but may have been yeah. a technology today. It was in non sequitur news for sure. Um, and uh, it, I said, not to mention all of the other issues, but silicosis is one of them. And somebody else had mentioned it. So you can get this contaminant in your lungs and you'll never breathe right again uh, because it's not something that can dissolve. It's not something that you can cough up. It'll just forever embed itself in your lungs and you're ruined. Um, so frost. So we might save the planet, but harm all the humans in the process. Well, it wouldn't even say, I don't think it'll save the planet either. It'll kill everything because even the animals get it. They'll inhale it and stuff like that. So Right. And even plants might be harmed. Yeah. Cooling the planet and you don't know that it's going to be exactly the right amount. You can send us into a freaking dark ages, deep freeze, etc. Frostpunk. Right into frostpunk. Uh, it's so absurd to even make that. Anyway, um, Horizon Zero Dawn. This is kind of a dystopian future um, world where robots basically run all over the place. And the people that exist are like clones, I guess. Um, I don't know that the full story is, but she's... Uh, oh, I don't want to ruin the story. Never mind. Spoiler Delete that. alert. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I can do that. Hold on. You know, we don't I have normally use that in Warcrafters. There you go. Spoiler alert. Um, do what I do. No, I, I was going to say, do what I do. Hit yourself in the head with a brick so you forget. Um, but I don't do that. So don't do that. Anyway, um, there's Zero Dawn here. Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, NO 2070. It says the future is in your hands. I never played this. 
It's back from 2011. If I did play it, I don't remember it. Um, it says, where once the future might have seemed like a place for optimism these days, it's hard to imagine what it would be like with uh, the oncoming storm of climate change. That's a task. We need a PSA banner. Yes, for when you say things like hit yourself with a brick. Oh, no, right, don't right, do right. that. Don't, no, don't do that. No. Uh, man, I can't imagine somebody actually doing that, but please don't do that. Now somebody's going to do it. So players must build a city in the near future and carefully manage their eco balance system, which is predicted on how many pollutants they put out into the world. Sometimes more industry equals better efficiency. So this is anno 2070, but they mentioned something here that if this isn't a precursor to the actual game that I'm hoping is number one in this, well, we'll see. Let's just see. So then they right, talk about death, take our time here. Then they talk about Death Stranding, um, which has an amazing story. It's absolutely awesome. It's weird that there's a baby um, inside a little pod, but there's it's part of the story and all that. Um, and but it's a, a walking simulator. Um, so Hideo Kojima um, always has his finger on the pulse of the current issues, and that is no different in Death Stranding, which depicts the world ravaged by time fall, an ecological phenomenon where falling rain rapidly ages anything that it touches. And it says, we'll forget about the dead coming back to life for the time being. So, yeah, as you walk, if you get rained on, then you uh, time changes. And so it says it's both apocalyptic and beautiful in the whole unique way of discussing climate change. And it's absolutely amazing. The story is absolutely um, terrific. Like, I wonder if it won any awards. Like bringing tears to people's eyes, apparently. So then there's Factorio. Um, this actually came back with a vengeance. It says nature fights back. Um, but the whole objective of this is to build a, a massive resource um, machine across a planet. And um, it says lately factory games have been all the rage and it's hard to deny the sheer pleasure of having a system set up that seamlessly turns out beautiful um, production of various colors. However, Factorio has a sneaky thorn ready to annoy every player. It turns out that the planet that they're uh, on is far from empty. In fact, it's the home planet of a bug like species that tries to take out the player's factory because of the pollution that it's causing. So they just okay. That's the interesting. Like the bugs rise up. Yep. Um, and it's not the first time that humans get attacked by bugs. So, um, what's interesting about this game is that it had been out for a little while, right? So it was out in 2020, but then they did this patch where I guess you go to space, something like that. I didn't end up. Um, I, I've never even purchased this. So hold on. Yeah, Space Age. That just came out. It's DLC. It's so big, it's the same price as the original game. Um, but people are gobbling it up. It's flagged as being overwhelmingly positive by the recent reviews and all reviews. 153,560. Wow. A 97%. Might be worth yeah. checking out. Yep. Um, so you can get the, 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 actually it says it's $42 now for the DLC. Oh, and the, the soundtrack separate, but I'd never listened to the soundtrack separately. Anyway, it's online co-op and land co-op cross platform, multiplayer, single player has steam achievements, uh, and a level editor editor apparently, but I don't know how that works. I thought it was dynamic content, but okay. Anyway, pretty cool. Then there's a uh, Civ six, the gathering storm. Uh, that just came out. Oh wait, no, no, not Civ six. There's another civilization that's coming. Um, when the gathering storm DLC was released for Civ six, uh, some players were reticent about how the game was implementing climate change mechanics when Civ six was, uh, mostly takes place in the past when such ecological changes weren't such an issue. Were they? Well, I don't know. Maybe they weren't recognized to be issues because I'm thinking about like high levels of factory pollution. I mean, I don't know yeah. how far back I mean, it it's, was, but it it started back 
uh, during the industrial age, uh, spewing coal into the air unabated. I mean, we are the creators. We stand on the shoulders of giants or we drown in the smog of our predecessors. Right. Yeah. We had like polluted water and oh air and just all kinds of things and really no safeguards. That's a shirt right there. We, we drown in the smog of our predecessors. Yeah. That's going to go in the shirt store anyway. Um, However, what resulted actually a fantastic and well thought out series of interconnected systems involving carbon emissions shared across all civilizations, resulting in rising sea levels and tangible penalties against civilizations that cause too many emissions. Then there's Terra Nil, which is really neat game. It actually you reverse the negative impact of um, the I don't know if it's smog or something. Basically, you have to rejuvenate a dead world. Uh, for you to move on to the next level it's actually a lot of fun to play this um and you can't go too much and you can't go too little too much and it causes a problem um too little and uh, you don't succeed so it's a lot of fun and then there's uh final fantasy 7. so this this list completely Doesn't missed include what you needed nope there is a game called eco eco Okay, first of all, that should have been a rich target because of the name. It's a multiplayer game. And your objective is to either uh, basically live in perpetuity in balance with nature um, or stop an asteroid from smashing into Earth. Okay, and you see the asteroid orbiting around you. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, that seems like that should have been included here. It's a massively multiplayer game, not massive. Let me say that again. It's a multiplayer game where everybody, but there's a lot of people that can play all together. You actually build up little societies and, and individual cultures. If you want to RP it, role play it. Um, and as you build up to your modernity level, you actually negatively impact the environment and it's very obvious you have metrics and stuff like that but to advance you have to construct something that's damaging to nature there's just oh, really I no way around it, it was the other way like you got more points or something if your structure was more eco-friendly or something you can try but with every modern level of technology, there's some refuse that's left over from mining. You leave slag from milling stuff. You leave, you have trash from food that you pick. It becomes trash because nature is largely in stasis or, well, yeah, I mean, it's largely in stasis. You don't have trees just dumping so much fruit all the time that the whole planet dies, right? So we have a symbiotic, the world is a symbiotic relationship in it, in and of itself. And then humans, you know, try to ruin everything, sh short circuit stuff and then go, oh, well, science will fix it. And we don't have the science that fixes it. We do, but boy, is it expensive, right, folks? Got to pay for that. But we can spend a lot of money on other things. Yeah. Oh, like I was recently told. Uh, oh, you know, I won't get into it. it. It's a non sequitur. And so that's not what this show is. So let's stick to games. Or what? All right, let's go on to the next game uh, or the next article. It's over in Warcrafters as well. World of Warcraft's new mount drains in-game auction house of tokens. That's because this mount is $90. It's nearly three times the cost of the base game. Oh, my goodness. That seems a little skewed for one mount. So the new traders, uh, gilded Br brutosaur mount in uh, world of Warcraft has skyrocketed in popularity, resulting in a shortage of wow tokens in the in-game auction house. Um, trade money for tokens, trade the token for the mount, um, released in, uh, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft, the mount has attracted players' attention, not just for its appearance, but also for its functionality, driving up its demand significantly. Now, I'm not saying to anybody, oh, goodness. 
Um, I'm not saying that it's wrong for you to spend 90 bucks on a mount. If you find value in it, you find value in it. Uh, I have purchased World of Warcraft, all of its expansions, and this particular expansion, I've played probably two weeks worth. Not, not two weeks, like 14 days. Not I've played continuous. twice. Because I just don't have time to 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 play the game. I would love to, but you know, I don't have the streamer bucks. Um, so Jose V. Rossi over at uh, GameRant.com put the article together, and they say that a uh, World of Warcraft's new ninety dollar mount, the Traders Gilded Brutosaur, has driven up demand for World of Warcraft tokens, leading to a shortage in the in-game auction house. The Traders Gilded Brutosaur. Um, Includes an auction house vendor and mailbox NPCs, enabling players to manage transactions and mail while on the go. Because all you have to do is spawn the mount and you have access to the auction house. Okay, I mean, that seems pretty handy, but not $90 worth. If you're a heavy gamer and or a World of Warcraft player and you have a lot of shit in the auction house and, and transfer stuff from mailbox to auction house and vice versa, this this thing is the arbitrage position for success because you would normally have to stop what you're doing out there, port your ass all the way to a, 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 a city, go to the auction house, stop what you're doing. Well, an opportunity cost. Hey man, location, location, location. So since it's launched in 2004, I was a beta tester for World of Warcraft, by the way. Um, anyway, with countless expansions and updates and not countless there, are, you can count them very definitively and Wait, updates. There's a specific number. Yeah. Updates. Those two, you can be counted. Wow, continue to evolve, adding new storylines, classes, races, gameplay mechanics, maintaining its popularity over the years. It's making bank, but it's a microtransaction. This is a mega transaction, 90 bucks. Selling for $90, the World of Warcraft traded, sorry, Traders Gilded Brutosaur. The MMO's latest premium mount has stirred up quite a buzz and caused some economic chaos in the game's community. The Brutosaur comes with an auction house vendor and mailbox NPCs allowing players to handle transactions and mail when they're out exploring. The special mount is part of, I, I'm almost going to go and log in and buy it for crying out loud. I will never really, really need it because I'm not that badass in WoW anymore. I stopped playing it when I went to business school and haven't really gone back. But for whatever the remnant of addiction is for me i'm still sitting here going god i want to play wow god i want to play wow and then i get i get billed and i go jesus i haven't stopped the what am i doing I, i've played it once in a month anyway um enough there isn't really much more to say about this but let's just say what was that? Did you see the price of the Mighty Caravan Brutosaurus price? Yeah, in the auction house, right? Right. The Traders Guild of Brutosaurus is the first mount since the wildly expensive $475 Mighty Caravan Brutosaurus from Battle for Azeroth. So it was removed. I don't think it was actually $475. No it way. It says it was the original price in the next paragraph. Hold on a second. We're doing it live. Yeah, originally released during Battle for Azeroth, the Mighty Caravan Brutosaur could be purchased for 5 million gold, but became unobtainable since, or once Shadowlands was released. So 5 million gold is when you translate it into in-game tokens would have been $475. Wow. Yeah. No pun intended. Wow. Hold on a second. That is insane. 
Yeah, I, and this this whole thing I missed because I'm just not that dedicated to it anymore. So yeah, uh, WoW tokens act as a link between real money and in-game currency and players can purchase them for $20 and sell them at the auction house for gold to purchase items in the wildly popular MMO. Yep, so there you go. And if you can't get the tokens, then. Right. I mean, at least it looks cool, but it's still pretty expensive. Look, you are not helping. You're supposed to keep me out of trouble. What the heck? You don't do that. That's an impossible job. Hey, Mirwat. That mount looks really cool. Maybe you should go and buy it. Dear God. All right. Well, there goes the mayoral mansion budget. Let's keep moving. Next article is over in Warcrafters with Fortnite. Epic Games has mastered the art of crossover. So why do so few other developers follow its lead? I think it's because they don't have the actual might. They don't have the connections. They don't have the ability, the skill to reskin their games for every single crossover that might come. And right. I mean, that's pretty labor intensive, cost intensive. And they also don't have the applicability. Not every game can be reskinned to facilitate like Lego, you know, Epic Fortnite spun up and well, Epic and Fortnite partnered with Lego to create an entire Fortnite Lego for crying out loud. Right. That's true. I mean, you're right. Not everybody can do it. I mean, certainly not an indie. And you're not going to sit there and find like World of Warcraft, Blizzard, um, EA, Microsoft, whatever the damn company is now, they're not going to reskin so that they can partner with something. You have to have the ecosystem for it. So Hell Hell Divers 2 might reskin like some of their armor or something like that uh, so that it matches like Lego or something like that. But they're not going to reskin the entirety of the game, whereas Fortnite can remap itself to it. Everybody's hard. Can, you can actually sell skins now, develop your own stuff and sell it as a, uh, as part of the store. So people are making money because people really like the bling that are being sold or developed by artists. Um, it's enabling, it's empowering, it's creative. It embraces the community and the love of the game. So it says here, uh, yeah, if Fortnite had come around when the author was in school, they probably would never have left the house. Never mind. Um, as it happened, I already at university when it was released in 2017. So for five years or so, with a little interest in picking up the game, it completely passed by them. That all changed in 2022 when Epic Games added something of such deep mind shattering importance to the game that they had no choice but to download it. Goku, the Dragon Ball Z crossover is the only reason that they started playing Fortnite, but that led to an obsession that's culminated in today, I suppose. Uh, Alex Raisbeck, uh, Raisbeck over at PCGamer.com put the article together. The deck statement says, I'm looking at you, Overwatch. So I, again, I don't think that Overwatch can reskin uh, because it has a world around it. And I don't think that same level of world applies to um, Fortnite because Fortnite right, isn't, yeah. it, it kind is, of depends on the type of coding of the original game, the resources behind it and the world building itself. If it doesn't have applicability, then it's going to be this weird juxtaposition between what the world is actually storytelling and, and this crossover, unless you go, well, you walk through a portal and you're in another dimension and suddenly you're Goku, you know? So, right, but then you're really not doing the crossover, right? Like it's almost like you're just mashing two things together. Yeah, you're in the engine of Overwatch, but you're playing Dragon Ball. So, but Fortnite is, of course, far from the only game to do crossovers. Overwatch 2, for example, has featured Cowboy Bebop and K pop group uh, Les Seraphim. Okay. Um, while Apex Legend has also teamed up with Star Wars and Naruto and Destiny 2 has in included content based on Ghostbusters, D&D and more. None of these games has managed to come close to Fortnite's level of success with these kinds of uh, events, however. And again, I think it's because the crossover doesn't match the world building. And so there's this weird like jerkiness to moving into a completely different realm. 
So it says, let's use Overwatch 2 as an example of the difference in approach. Right now, it has a crossover running with My Hero Academia. Um, this includes a few skin bundles, some uh, challenges you can complete to unlock unique sprays. Ignoring the fact that only one of these skin bundles set you back more than $20 worth of in-game currency, this is about as surface level as a crossover can get. See what I'm saying? It doesn't actually merge into it. Right, and if you're doing it like that, it's probably not a positive yeah, you're you're trying to tell a story, but you're not actually reading any of the words. There's no unique changes to the game, meaning the only way to participate in the event is if you're uh, if you aren't willing to fork out for the skins is to complete the event challenges. Unfortunately, all of the challenges simply require you to play a certain number of matches. So engaging with the event essentially boils down to playing the game exactly as you would normally. So you're not really part of that other experience. You're just playing the game. It's exactly what I'm telling you. Um, so Fortnite also added some My Hero Academia skins to the game during Chapter 4 Season 1 back in 2022. And not to harp on about Overwatch too much, but they were a bit cheaper than 20 bucks. So, But while the cosmetics were there for those who wanted them, this event went far beyond just skins. It included a unique weapon, the Deku Smash. Um, taken straight out of the anime and a fully new map with its own mini game was added and a set of unique challenges to complete to uh, earn rewards. So it embraced the storytelling of the world. Right, it actually kind of went all in on the yeah. crossover. Yep. And I'm on the outside. I don't even play Fortnite. I don't even play any of these games because I really don't like these kind of arena style games. Um, well, this was actually just submitted for the general topic of gaming crossovers. Yeah, and I think it's neat. Um, I love this kind of stuff. I actually love watching people play these games because it has a level. It requires a level of tenacity that I just don't have. Um, like I said, I, I every once in a while I joke about this, but like I have an undiagnosed ADHD or something or at least uh, what do they call it? ADD, attention deficit disorder. Like I'll just wander off uh, because I just get bored with it. The only thing that actually motivates me nowadays seems to be doing the streams because they're so dynamic and you never know what somebody's going to say in a chat or leave me a comment somewhere or send me an email or submit a news article. So it it's very, very dynamic and keeps me stimulated. So, so the article goes into uh, more about this, but in essence, they're saying what I'm saying as well. Um, so if you want to know more about this article, then definitely go over and check it out. Um, we're running a little late. We're trying to keep everything within 30 minutes. So let's keep on jumping. Um, the next article and the last one for today is over in Warcrafters. The day before developer cancels second Kickstarter after it whimpers out with only $2,200 of funding immediately goes in all in on a third game in the same announcement so uh, I, this is an odd turn of events i titled this when not enough is not enough um so in what can only be described as a display of biblical hubris the day before developers have announced a third game instead of going quietly into that good night um so uh the day before kind of flamed out and um there's a lot of controversy around the day before. In case you're unfamiliar, uh, Fantastic are the people who made one of the highest profile gaming disasters in recent memory. The ones who shipped a game that saw its studio closed temporarily, as the article suggests, within four days. It's the studio that made a game no one on the team seemed to understand the nature of during development, finding out it was an MMO via their own uh, announcements. Um, hey, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Harvey Randall over at PCGamer.com put the article together and it says third time's the charm. Um, yeah, so it launched and everybody basically hated it and they pulled it back. Um, after promising burnt fans that it had turned over a new leaf in September, Fantastic drummed up a Kickstarter for a game called Escape Factory, a physics-based multiplayer co-op escape game. That we'll never get to see. The Kickstarter was a dud. It raised a whopping total of around 3000 SGD. I'm not sure what that is because um, I don't know the uh, I don't know that denomination. Huh? Anyway, roughly twenty two hundred and seventy dollars out of a twenty thousand SGD goal. Um, 
So it seems fantastic, very publicly meandering and chaotic debacle worked in direct opposition to his transparency policy. The public remains unconvinced. That's Singapore dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't want to infer from that. So the studio declared the game's cancellation on Twitter and staggeringly proceeded to announce a third game in the exact same spot. So we didn't make our money. I mean, what so is we're going try. on here? Too much time. And by the way, just for reference, that's less dollars in U.S. dollars than three. Oh, really? It's oh, it yeah, it says roughly twenty two seventy yeah in U.S. dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the studio declared the game's cancellation and then said uh, we're going to do something else and then announced it. Um. That they do were going to do the another one. The second one was so abysmal because of the backlash from the first. Like uh, people didn't necessarily like, trust the studio or expect. First and second, by the way, the like two of them flamed out. So well, this third one okay. isn't going to. Yeah. I think what needs to take place is that they, these developers, either need to just quietly do it, and show the audience that or the customers that they can actually do it. Or they need to break up and go work for somebody else and say that they were part of the teams that facilitated developing this and we'd like to make up for our past shenanigans um but like the article says here i want to believe that anyone can change and who knows asmongold cleaned his kitchen recently anything can happen but this was such a head fake from something that he brought about so Asmund Gold made some really, uh, I would hazard to say, uh, uh, an affront to society, um, and uh, and then said sorry, not sorry, kind of a thing, apology, and then suddenly cleaned his kitchen. He was notorious. He was known. His his place basically. He said at one time in his, in one of his streams that uh, he knew when to get, uh, when the morning was because the sun would shine across his room and warm up some animal somewhere in his room that died. What? And the smell became too unbearable, so he would get up. Yeah. Yeah. The... It's amazing what this guy apparently lives in. Um, it's a real shame. I mean, it, it, it seems like he needs some assistance, but he's making bank millions of dollars. And I don't know if it's a shtick or it's all bullshit or what, but like the he cleaned his kitchen. So good on him. Um, but this article like brought attention to that at the very end of it, of the, the article, because maybe fantastic will turn over a new leaf, but I don't think that it's possible on their own. They either have to do it in silence, build a game that garners respect. Right, the public aren't going to trust it unless they actually show it, I guess. Right, exactly. So good luck to them and good luck to us. We're going to move on. Uh, we're going to shut down, reset, and we're going to go on to uh, technology today. It's a 30 minute episode as well after this one. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to reboot our machine and that'll bring us back to Warcrafters over at hometown.com. I'm going to say bye. And so is the sentient AI from the future. Good night, hometown citizens. Thanks for joining us for Warcrafters. We'll have another episode of that next week, but stay tuned. We have more weekly episodes ahead. And uh, those weekly episodes are technology today and for Will Tech. So see you in a little bit. Talking about that motivated me to go clean my kitchen too. <laughs>